Truth Still Matters, episode number 26. Come one, come all. Welcome to the Catholic Podcast. Truth Still Matters. The human person is made for truth, despite this dictatorship of relativism we breathe every day. This podcast exists in the stream of the new evangelization championed by Pope John Paul the Great and continue with Pope Emeritus Benedict the 16th and Pope Francis. We will have the opportunity to learn and reflect on the timeless truths revealed by God and deposited in the Catholic Church. If you're looking for apologetics or theology that can be applied to your life right now, you've found a new home. Stop drowning in the world of opinion and embrace yourselves for truth still matters. intro stated, we no longer have to drown in the world of opinion. You and I can be freed by the way, the truth, and the life. And that is Christ Jesus. I want to welcome you back for another episode of Truth Still Matters. The topic of today's show is the resurrection. Jesus is not dead he's alive we are an easter people stay tuned jesus performed many signs and wonders miracles for our sake he wanted to lead us to a belief in who he is. Healing a blind man. Healing a woman. Walking on the water. The multiplication of the fish. He performed these miracles not to benefit himself, but to lead others to show, to testify to who he was, that we might come to a belief in him, a belief that goes beyond a mere mental ascent, but a belief that enables us to entrust our lives, to put our entire selves in his hands. And the ultimate miracle, the ultimate sign that confirms everything that Jesus did Everything that he says is the resurrection. This is an unprecedented miracle. What do I mean by the resurrection? I simply mean this. They killed Jesus. And when I say they, I'm talking about Rome. I'm talking about Jewish leadership at that time. I'm talking about myself. I'm talking about you. We crucified Jesus, but love is greater than death. And God is love. And Jesus got up from the dead. How do we know this? Well, it is a dogma of the faith, which means what? It's a divinely revealed truth. God has shown this to us and it is defined by the church that Jesus got up from the dead. And just because it's a dogma doesn't automatically mean that everyone's going to believe it. Human reasoning does not bring an individual to faith. The grace of God does. But that grace of God always builds on 
human nature always builds on reasoning. So believers have a reason for believing. It's not just a jump in the dark. And so this podcast will take a look at some of the evidence that Jesus did get up from the dead. But in the end, you and I have to take this evidence and look for ourselves. Because if Jesus is still alive, we should be able to meet him today. And that's what's so exciting about the resurrection. The Catholic Church is headed by Jesus himself, and he is still alive. Let's look at one of the primary sources of divine revelation, the sacred scripture, specifically the New Testament. Even before you regard the New Testament as an inspired text, when you look at it simply on the human level of ancient literature, the New Testament is the most attested document in ancient literature. To get a comparison, let's take a look at the second most attested ancient literature document. The Iliad by Homer. That was written approximately around 800 BC. And we don't have any original copies of the Iliad. What we have today are copies. And we judge how accurate of a text we have based on the number of copies we have and the time frame between the original manuscripts and the copies. With the Iliad, we've got a time frame between the original and the copy of about a thousand years. And we have approximately 650 copies. And no one really argues with having a reliable text of the Iliad. Take a look at the New Testament. The range between the original date of the manuscript and the copies ranges around 150, 200, 300 years. Look at the number of copies. You have 5,000 copies. When you compare that to the Iliad of only 650, the New Testament has 5,000. When you compare the date range, 1,000 years versus 200, 200 to 300 years. And look at the pure form that it comes down to us. There's a 99.5% pure factor. When you look at and, com and analyze all of the manuscripts, it is the most attested document. We have a reliable historical text. If we can't trust that we have an accurate copy of the New Testament, we can't trust any ancient literature. And what has this reliable document told us? It describes a man, Jesus of Nazareth, specifically in the gospel accounts. And this man foretold that he would get up from the dead. Look at this scripture. talks about the temple and how Jesus says that in three days he will raise the temple. They were thinking that he was talking about the physical building of the temple, but Jesus was referring to his body. What happened on Mount Tabor at the transfiguration? Jesus shows a glimpse of his glory to prepare the disciples for his road to Jerusalem. And as he's coming down the mount, he tells them, don't tell anyone until the Son of Man is raised from the dead. He was preparing them for what was to come. Did they get it? Did they understand? Absolutely not. But he still had patience and he still prepared them. That's what Jesus still does today. He's preparing us to meet him by our various trials and tribulations, by the joys that we experience in our day-to-day -day life. Christianity is about meeting a living person. And so Jesus foretells that he will get up from the dead. And then we have the ultimate sign. And that is after his death, 
There's the empty tomb. That's an essential sign. No one claims to have the bones of Jesus. Why not? Many of his contemporaries have passed down their bones, so to speak. The early Christians are big believers in relics, which are, which are sacramentals. No one claims to have relics of Jesus. No one claims to have relics of Mary. Jesus got up from the dead. And his apostles were leery of it at first. Jesus first appears to Mary and other women. Amongst the disciples, he appears to Kepha or Peter and then the rest of the apostles. There's a scripture that tells us that he appeared to over 500 people at one time. This is the testimony of the New Testament that this man who was killed was seen again after death. This is the heart of Christianity. If the bones of Jesus were found, don't kid yourself, we would not have a faith. St. Paul tells us that if Jesus doesn't die and rise, we are still in our sins. The Christian faith hinges on the fact that Jesus gets up from the dead. Because him getting up from the dead tells us that he is who he claimed to be. And that is the great I am, the bridegroom, the forgiver of our sins. This is the hope that you and I have. That when we pass from this life to the next, by God's grace, we will be able to live with him forever. Because Jesus is the pioneer and finisher of our faith. What happens to him, he promises that will happen to us, for those that believe, to those that submit to his grace, to those that open up themselves, to him being Lord of their lives, of being Lord of everything that we do and say and think about. What will it be like to rise from the dead? The Christian faith teaches us that not only will our souls live on forever, but we will have glorified bodies. What does that mean? What does it look like? Let's look at the evidence that the New Testament provides. Jesus' body, after he raises himself from the dead, is not a ghost. He eats with his apostles. People touch him. Remember Thomas? In one sense, it's the same body that he was tortured in. You still see the marks in his hands, in his side. But yet, in another sense, it's different because people can't recognize him right away. And he's not tied to time and space. The apostles in the upper room on the day of the resurrection witnessed Jesus coming through the walls. This is a quality of the glorified body. The good news is that this man who was once dead offered up for our sin, is now alive. This resurrection was not just a resuscitation for Jesus to live again and then die again. He lives to die no more. He takes his humanity into heaven. And now you and I can now live with him forever because he is the mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. His resurrection is the hope that holds us together in tough times. And Christian hope is not just wishful thinking. Christian hope is experiencing a reality in the here and now, but knowing that there's more to come. We can experience a relationship with the risen Lord. No, it's not in its perfect form, but it's real. And we know that that realness will lead us to the kingdom coming in its fullest sense by the promise of Jesus. He lives. And if you don't believe me, look for yourself. I had to look for myself after promptings of my loved ones who had experienced the risen Lord themselves. 
If Christianity is just about reading and writing and reducing the scripture to a moral ethic, to reducing Jesus as a historical character, Christianity will bore you. That kind of Christianity bores anyone after an amount of time. You might stick in for a while if the family is Christian, but in, uh, when tough times get tough or when you begin to think on your own, then you're not going to be wanting to be bothered with the Christian faith. But the Christian faith, once you meet the living person of Jesus, is a great adventure. You never know what's going to happen because we are not in the driver's seat anymore. A living person who lived 2,000 years ago in the flesh, who lived from all eternity with Father and the Holy Spirit is alive and he's not just alive, but he's loving you and I. This is the hope that stirs us. This is the hope that sustains us in troubled times. This is the hope that distinguishes the Easter people from people that fall to despair. Look, he wants to meet you. He wants to know you more than you want to know him. And he knows us better than we know ourselves. The only way that we, you and I know ourselves is if we avail ourselves to him revealing himself to us. Many people want to deny that Jesus got up from the dead. Many people say, ah, the apostles were hallucinating. Are you kidding me? An hallucination is temporary. If this was a hallucination, it would have lasted for 40 days. Ah, uh, some people say, what about a conspiracy? Those apostles cooked up a story. To, to transform the Roman world. What motive did they have for cooking up a story to transform the Roman world? They got killed by it. What motive would they have? This is not a conspiracy. Some people say it's a myth. It kind of developed out of the Christian imagination of the community later on. It's not a myth. Myth takes a lot longer much more time to develop. We have Paul's letters to the Thessalonians in 50 AD, which is about 20 years after the resurrection of Jesus, where eyewitnesses of his resurrection are still in existence. This is not a myth. Are you kidding me? The New Testament talks about how Jesus is not portrayed as simply the glory guy, but in, he's portrayed in his weaknesses. His apostles are portrayed in their weaknesses. This is a real story. You have discrepancies between different accounts. And this is a sign that this is a real account, not a cooked up story. Some people say, hey, maybe Jesus really didn't die. That's kind of a swoon theory. No, the Romans were too meticulous. Jesus was dead. Jesus died and he rose. God died in his human nature. The body and soul separated in the human nature. And that enabled the second person of the Trinity to die. But the, the soul and the body were separated. But the soul was never separated from the divine nature. The body was never separated from the divine nature. And that divine nature raises Jesus from the dead. The question is, who raised Jesus from the dead? Well, Jesus testifies that no one takes his life from him. He lays it down and he takes it back up by his own power. So we have evidence that Jesus is raised himself from the dead. There are also scriptures that tell us that the Father raised him from the dead. We also have scriptures that tell us that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, raised him from the dead. Well, who raised him from the dead? All three persons. This is Trinitarian theology. You have the difference between the oikonomia and the theologia or the theologia. The oikonomia is the economy of God, the actions of God, where God's actions outside of the Godhead in connection with creation is always the work of all three people. May God be glorified forever and ever. And may you and I never go to sleep on the fact that Jesus is alive and let us be courageous enough to live like it, to put our faith into practice, to live it, to submit to his lordship, to be willing to stand for him in this world of darkness, to be willing to tell other people about his good news by what we say and by how we live. 
how we love one another, especially our enemies. We are an Easter. We don't read and write poetry because it's cute. We read and write poetry because we are members of the human race. And the human race is filled with passion. So what's up? Blood pressure and the efforts of primates With guerrilla units ill influence low lives and high stakes Telling students to do this foolishness from a mind state That says to open eyes and don't rely on your blind faith So what's up? The number of hotties using bodies is live bait Confuse the wrong music will prove to move them the right way Raising the temperature even though they're frozen the ice age Convinced these winter burns are simply part of a price paid So what's up? It needs to be fists so I keep mine raised More often it's open hands and broken families and crime rates Or token middle fingers from drivers turned irate Hiding behind metal pedals, side lanes, and highways so what's up? Gang signs and three slugs to snuff a kind face With a nine by the waistline and a mean mug to find change No matter what anybody tells you Words and ideas can change the world Yo, throw your arms down and lift your hands high to show them what's up with love from mankind Pushovers with lids closed, tiptoe through landmines So, so we spit flows for kinfolk to stand by Yo, throw your arms down and lift your hands high to show them what's up with love from mankind Pushovers with lids closed, tiptoe through landmines so, so we spit flows for uh, kinfolk to stand by So what's up? Man, not much in the loop, better touch True life is tough, we gotta stay focused in love and in lust His love is endless But his love is in us So come out with your hands so up So what's up? With the hands up Ready for handouts Man, I can't stand How nobody wanna stand out A stand up And it's driving me crazy Time to man up We're a nation of maybe So what's up? Quick question What if I were president?